I'm at an ARC meeting right now, and the ARC meeting is in the Lakeside Ballroom at the Washingtonian, Washingtonian Marriott in uh, Gaithersburg, Gaithersburg, Marriott, and about 30 minutes away from our headquarters. Uh, when you come to one of these, basically this video is just going to be a how-to on how to set up the Titan system for a ARC meeting. Uh, the majority of them all are the same. We set up the Titan system, which is in here, um, and then there's a phone call that we there's a phone call that we incorporate into it, and it's all pretty simple. Uh, it can be a little bit technical, so I figured it'd be a good idea for me to go ahead and shoot a video for you guys. So basically, what you see here is everything that is in the norm you will bring to the event. Our uh, Dewalt uh, toolbox. This has XLR cables in it. It has specialty cables in it. It has power strips. It has power supplies. It has you know, a malt box and it has a PCDI and it's got a whole bunch of other cool stuff in it. This box right here is our Titan box. The Titan box uh, is capable of holding the Titan head unit and 30 of our microphones. Currently we do not keep the Titan head unit in here. We keep the Titan head unit in our gig rig right here. Um, we'll get into the gig rig here in a minute. Uh, but basically all of our microphones and all of our cables and the laptop that you need in order to run the, uh, uh, the Titan system is located inside this box. Now moving over to our gig rig here. Uh, this gig rig is basically a server on wheel, a server rack on re wheels. And uh, basically all the components that we use at the majority of our larger events are already in here and they're already pre-wired and I have everything labeled on the soundboard. Uh, these two boxes right here are our Mackie speakers and these guys right here are our speaker stands. Uh, one of the first things that I want to show you guys how to do is actually the proper way to push uh, the gig rig. The gig rig is kind of tall and it's kind of, uh, it's really bright right here. There's a window right here. Uh, it's kind of tall and it's narrow, so you have to push it in the right direction. So let me show you the right way to push it. So, um, like I said, it is, it's, it looks like it's pretty wide this way, but if you look at it this way, it's pretty narrow. Uh, when you push it, you don't want to push it this way. Uh, because if you push it this way, it has wheels on the bottom called casters, and they're tiny. Uh, and if you hit a crack in the ground, or you hit a stick, or you hit a pebble, and if you're pushing it this way, it can actually fall over. And we don't want it to fall over because there's a lot of expensive stuff in it. So basically what we're going to do is you go from this direction, and you just push this way. Um, I showed you this before, this is our Titan box, but I just wanted to show you exactly how to get into it. It has these latches. There's a latch here and there's a latch here. If you flip this latch up and you twist it, you can then pull it down this way. And you do the same thing over here. You twist it and you pull it down. And then to close it is the same way. You twist it and you see there's a little locking mechanism that when you twist it, it sucks down and it keeps the lid shut. And then once you have it unlocked, you just lift it up like this. The underside of the lid, so you lift it up, and basically what you have here is these are all the gooseneck microphones. And in order to get access to these, you just pull the Velcro out of the way here, and then there's another one below it. Pull this Velcro, and then the gooseneck microphones come out one at a time. And then if you look down, as soon as you go inside the box, you'll see there's a whole bunch of goodies. We have, we have two 60-foot audio cables. These cables will go to uh, the gig rig, which has the Titan head unit in it, uh, and it'll connect the head unit to all of the speakers. And we have the Toshiba laptop and the power supply, which we use to control um, the Titan head unit. Uh, there's also things like the IC cards. There's an IC card reader. Uh, if you want to assign a card to somebody, uh, you can actually you put this in, the, uh, in their welcome packet, and when they sit down at the microphone, they can touch it to the microphone, and the microphone will know who they are. Uh, we don't do that at the ARC meetings, uh, but I just thought I would show it to you. Uh, these trays, there's actually a bunch of trays in here. If you slide this out, you have access to trays below. And if, and if I pull the next tray out, there's three, tra three trays identical to this. And these are all of our, this is what you screw the gooseneck microphones into. These are the Titan uh, uh, delegate control units. Getting back to our gig rig, um, 
basically there is a top cover, uh, there's a front cover, and there's a back cover. The gig rig has uh, the exact same kind of latches to release everything. Just these have a little notch so you can actually lock it. So you can, if you had a lock, like a little TSA lock, you could lock this or a suitcase lock. Uh, it's the same way. Flip this up, twist this, pull it out. And then you spin the rig around. And you see it's got the exact same thing. So you just twist it. And then the lid literally pulls directly off. Once you have the lid off, you can flip open the laptop tray and you have access to our Yamaha 16 channel uh, MG16XU uh, mixer. And there's still the cover, close this while we move it around, there's still the cover that covers the front and the one that covers the back. So we just remove those. Now you have access to the entire front of the panel. And going from the bottom to the top, we have a, a drawer, and we keep batteries in it, and we keep wireless handheld mics and wireless labs, and we also have our antennas for our receivers. Going up one, we have the Titan head unit, and this controls all of the uh, speakers, all of the uh, microphones. Going up again, we have, this is our ATEM Production Studio 4K uh, live video switcher. This is if we're doing an um, event that has multiple video cameras. Above it, again, is our ZAP uh, XAP-TH2. Uh, it's basically our telephone hybrid. We run a telephone line into here, and then we go out of this and into our mixer, and so we can incorporate a phone call. Above this, we have two of our Shure ULXD receivers, and these will control the microphones that are down here. And at the very top, this is our Furman, and the Furman is basically a power supply. Everything that's inside this is plugged into this. And then you just flip this switch and everything powers on. And at the very top is our Yamaha 16 channel uh, mixer. Uh, we have certain things that we use at the majority of all of our events already all pre-wired, so we don't have to wire anything when we get uh, on site. Uh, channel 1 and channel 2 is our Shure wireless receivers. Uh, three and four is nothing because hopefully by the time this video is edited we'll actually have two more receivers so we'll be able to control um, up to four wireless microphones. Uh, input five is our Tiden conference mic system and input uh, six is our telephone hybrid. Here we have the top of the board. Uh, this is uh, how the audio comes in for input one which is the Shure mic one. Uh, this is the input two for the Shure mic two. Over here we have the Tiden, um, and if you notice on the Tiden there is a, a 20 dB pad. This button does need to be pressed because the audio signal that comes out of the Tiden is a line level, uh, and if you take 26 decibels away from a, mic, from a line level, it basically converts it to a mic level. Um, and then we have um, input 6, which is our telephone hybrid, and it is the same way. So the 26 dB pad needs to be pressed. Uh, if you come over here, on this side of the board, everything over here is, is all of the outs. Everything over here is audio going into the board. Everything going here is audio coming out of the board. Um, I have everything fed to auxiliary outputs. So, and I have all of the uh, cables labeled. So everything, uh, so auxiliary one is audio that goes to uh, the, the Titan. Auxiliary two is audio that goes to the telephone. And auxiliary three is audio that goes to the press out that's on the back. Each input uh, has auxiliary controls. So the blue knobs are auxiliary for each input. Um, the top one, all these control auxiliary one. All these blue switches control auxiliary two. And all these blue switches control auxiliary three. 
Um, say this is the, well, let me go over to the, the uh, telephone hybrid. Uh, auxiliary one, you want turned up because the people that are talking on the phone, um, you want the people in the room uh, to be able to hear it. So you want it to be able to come out of the Tiden speakers. Um, auxiliary two, uh, we actually have auxiliary two turned down because we don't want the telephone to loop around to itself. It's called mix minus um, uh, mixing. Um, so basically, if the audio that come in, came in from the telephone also went back out to the telephone, the person's voice, when they spoke on the phone, they would hear themselves speaking on the other side, and, and it would cause something called, uh, um, um, well, it would cause feedback. The Tiden, however, um, you actually don't need to worry about the auxes on it. You can leave all three of the auxes up because built into the Tiden in the software, uh, you can actually uh, do, echo, do echo cancellation uh, inside the Tiden, so you don't have to worry about uh, doing any mix minus mixing on the board. But for the telephone hybrid, it's very important to have aux 1 up, so that way you can hear it in the room in the Tiden. And aux 2, you have to have turned down so it doesn't uh, loop and cause bad feedback. And then aux 3, we always have aux 3 up on all of them just because, just in case we want to plug in a, uh, a malt box if the press is going to come. Everything is, of course, run by electricity. I had already explained to you that all the components in this are plugged into the Furman power supply, and basically it's just a power strip that screws into um, the gig rig. So let's turn this thing around. Uh, so down at the very bottom, um, this is the power cable right here for the, uh, for the Furman. Um, I'm going to eventually have it wired into this, so you'll just be able to get an extension cord and plug it directly into this, and then everything will be powered up. But for now, you just have to plug your extension cord into this. Now that the Furman power supply is plugged in, if I turn the power button, you should see lights light up. Everything, everything starts lighting up and things start humming, and you know that we have power to the system. One of the nice things about this uh, gig rig is you see this little table? This is actually uh, the piece that I took off of the, the back of the unit. So you take it off the back of the unit, and there's actually hooks on it that hook in right here. And then and these, these legs, they just fold down. And you can hook it here. And then the, the cover that covers the front can actually go on the other side as well. Um, we don't actually need to have um, you know, two tables. Uh, so we just need to have one uh, for this particular event. So the other one we just will store. Um, and we just won't use it. So now that we have the gig rig uh, completely set up and powered, uh, the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and connect all of the delegate microphones and run them around the table. So now the fun begins. Uh, now we have to run all of our microphones. And all of our microphones basically daisy chain together. Uh, each daisy chain uh, can have up to uh, 15 microphones. Um, always make sure you have your phone on vibrate. My phone just vibrated. Um, so basically what we'll do is we'll run one. We'll start the microphones at that end. We'll go one, two, three, and then 11 on this side. And then we'll start another one on this side. And we'll go 11 up this way, and then we'll end here. So we'll have one daisy chain that goes this way, and another daisy chain that goes this way. Now, like I said, the fun begins. Once you have all the microphones uh, evenly spread around the table, like I have, uh, you have the delegate unit, which is right here, and you have the gooseneck microphone. Uh, all of the delegate microphones, uh, all of the delegate units daisy chain together with these cables here. You plug one uh, unit to the right to this one, and you plug a unit to the left with this one. And the gooseneck microphones, you just if you look right in here, you can see that there is five little pins. You line the five little pins up right here, and then you twist this knob right here until it gets tight. You'll notice that there are numbers uh, on, there you are, on the gooseneck microphones. Uh, those numbers don't necessarily matter. Uh, the numbers that do matter are the numbers that are on the back of the, uh, on the, back of the delegates. You want them to be in order. You know, you want them to start at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then go all the way around. And uh, that's important 
and I will uh, tell you why that's important in just a few minutes. So right now I've got to go ahead and I've got to connect the first delegate microphone to the tied in head unit which is located in the gig rig and I'll show you how to do that. Okay so this is the back of the uh, gig rig right here and this gray unit uh, right in here is the back of the Titan uh, unit. Uh, remember when we opened up the big blue box and there were the big cables? Um, you need to pull one of those big cables out and you'll look at them and you'll see that there is a male end and there is a female end. Uh, one end plugs into the back of the Titan head unit which is the male end and then you run this cable over to uh, your table and you connect it to your first microphone. But now that I've run the first cable over to our table, um, if you remember, I said that you can only run 12 or 15 uh, delegate units uh, per cable. Uh, so if you look here, so we plugged one into this one, and there's another one here, and underneath it, it actually says delegate one and delegate two. So delegate one is going to run around the mics that go around this side of the table, and I'm going to use this cable to control the delegate two out, and I'm going to run mics around this side of the table. So same thing, you get your male end, and it actually says Tiden on the very top of this, and you know that that's the top of the cable, and then that plugs directly into there. And you really want to try to keep your cables neat. These two microphones that you see, this microphone is going to be delegate, uh, be controlled from delegate two, and I'm going to connect these 11 and those last three over there are going to be on one daisy chain and starting from this uh, delegate head unit these three and then those eleven are going to be uh, the other uh, so we're well within our twelve to fifteen uh, delegate per uh, chain so this is the wire that I've run over to myself and you need to connect it to the appropriate see this is two females two females don't go together so you connect the male and the female, and this one is now connected. And then you use your daisy chain and you connect your next cable. And it's, it's always convenient because you know if you have the short cable, you plug it into the long cable of the next one. So you connect these together. And the cables also say Tiden on the top, and there's a little arrow. Push the arrows together, and it's connected. And so now I'm going to work my way all the way around. So I've just connected uh, these 11, 12, 13, these 14 microphones. So now I'm going to work my way over and I'm going to start back over here. And I'm going to connect my first one and then I'm going to run my daisy chain that direction. So there is a, um, even though everything on the gig rig is, is powered, is, has power to it, uh, some things you actually have to flip a switch on and off. Uh, the Titan is one of them. Uh, so I'm going to go and I'm going to flip the power switch on, which is on the front of the Titan, and you'll see all the blue screens are going to light up. Ooh, pretty. Uh, of course, you probably can't really see because of the glare, but you can see one of them. This guy right here, you can see that that screen is on, and it basically goes through a check. It initializes them all, and it boots them all up, and... And right now, we actually will have sound from them. So if I come over to one of them, and they are push-to-talk microphones. So if I push the button and I talk into a microphone, there is a little one-watt speaker in every single one of the uh, uh, delicate sets. So when I talk into this microphone, it comes out of all the other microphones. So they're only a one-watt, it's only a one-watt speaker. But what did I say? There's 28. Or 20, yeah, 28 microphones in here, so there's 28 one watt speakers, and uh, the sound is, is perfectly adequate. Uh, we are going to add um, some of our Mackie speakers. Turn this off right now, maybe so it doesn't quite sound as uh, echoey. Uh, we are going to add some of our Mackie speakers because there is going to be uh, phone participants uh, for this type of meeting, and when people come in over the telephone, um, the sound isn't very well, 
Uh, and so these speakers, they are kind of on the on the cheap side. I mean, they work good for little little meetings, but uh, but they're a little bit on the uh, on the cheap side. So we'll plug in our Mackie speakers, and so it'll sound it'll make the people on the phone sound a little bit better. And once you walk around and you test all your microphones and you, and you know that there is sound coming out of all your microphones, there is a Titan laptop that you have to plug in. And the reason why um, you have to plug the Titan uh, laptop in is so that you can individually control the gain on each microphone. Say one person talks a little bit louder than the other person, you need to turn that microphone up. And if somebody is talking, or if somebody's talking quiet, you have to turn it up. If somebody's talking loud, you have to turn it down. That's why the numbers on the back are important. Uh, you need to draw a little diagram up on a piece of paper, you know, and draw your your rectangle, and then do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or whatever the numbers are for the microphones. Because if this person is speaking, it's not going to say Dr. Smith. It's going to say microphone one. Um, and if the person over there, uh, it's not going to say you know Professor Guest. It's going to say microphone 28. So you just have to know if you count. Okay, 11 mics up. And, okay, and then you look at your piece of paper and it says, oh, that's mic 27. So then you go into the system and you go into 27 and you turn it up and you turn it down. So let me show you how to do that right now. So now that we've got all of the uh, microphones all set up, uh, there's a couple other items that we have to set up. I talked to you about the uh, Titan laptop. This is the Titan laptop. So you've got your Titan laptop and your power cord. I like to set the Titan laptop up on the laptop tray. Uh, you also need a, uh, a Netgear uh, Ethernet switch uh, because the uh, laptop that controls the Titan head unit, uh, you have to control it via Ethernet. And you can't control it directly from the laptop to the Titan head unit. You have to run it through a switcher first. So you need a switcher or switch. You need a power unit for the switch. And you need two Ethernet cables. So once you have everything all set up, you need to plug everything in. Uh, there are some auxiliary power outlets on the back of the, uh, the Furman. So for instance, the laptop, you can plug directly into the back of the Titan head unit. Uh, there's also a plug on the front of the Furman. And I like to plug my Ethernet switcher into that because it's kind of a, it's got like a big block on it. So it just doesn't take up as much space. So I'm going to plug the laptop directly into the back of my gig rig here. Plug this into the side and power on the laptop. I'm going to come over here. Get this power cable from the uh, switch and plug it in right in the front. All the little fancy lights are on so we know that it's working. This is where our Ethernet cables come into play. A little brighter, probably should have closed my iris a little bit, but hey, this is an internal video. So separate your cables. We're going to set one down here. The other one, we're going to plug into our laptop and then plug into our switch. And then the other one, we're going to plug into our switch and plug into the Titan head unit. Uh, there's two Ethernet ports on the back of the Titan head unit. Uh, one of them says LAN, the other one says extension. Um, you want to plug into the LAN port. And you know that everything is working because you see green lights here. And there's a light on the side of the laptop. And there is a light uh, above the LAN port on the back of the Titan. You need to log into the uh, Titan laptop. Select the Titan username. and log in. I'm not going to tell you what the password is because every couple of months we change the password. 
if you look at this video in the next month or so, it'll be the same password. If you don't look at this video for three months, it's going to be a different password. This is our Titan laptop screen. Um, you can't really see it very well, but there's basically two programs on this computer that you need. There's an icon at the bottom. It says DCS 5.6. This is the one that controls the Titan software. And then there's one above it called Clear One Gware, and that's how we control the uh, telephone hybrid. So right now we're doing the Titan, so I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, DCS 5.6. Right now you get a, a login window that pops up. It says meeting type, base, account, admin, and password. Um, there is not a password for it, so you just go ahead and click OK. And now we have the Titan management system. Um, if you go up to the top left where it says uh, system setup, you get different um, uh, selections here. You have the venue designer, you have the screen manager, and you have the unit manager. If we want to manage the units. So you select the unit manager and then you have another drop down menu where you can unit setup, unit arrangement, and system test. We want to go with the unit setup. And right now we have a list of all of our microphones. So say I want to click on microphone 14. And then I go down here to the bottom where I go to mic parameters and I click on mic parameters. That's going to open up this window right here. So right here you can adjust the gain. So this is microphone 14 right here. Uh, so if that person is talking um, very loud, you want to grab this, click uh, left click, and then bring this down. You can bring it all the way down to negative 15 and you won't hear anything. Or if they are uh, very quiet, you can bring it all the way up to positive 15. Uh, but I usually like to uh, just go up maybe like two or three, you know, or maybe three or four at a time. And then you hit the return button. And then what, and it doesn't actually change the volume of the person that's speaking until you actually hit return. Once you hit return, um, since we turned it up, you'll hear that they are now speaking a little bit louder. Um, if you need it to be a little bit louder, you just go back to 14. Make sure you have 14 selected. You go to mic parameters. And then you just slowly click here and you turn it back, you turn it up a little bit more. And then you hit return. If at the very beginning of the conference everybody goes around and talks and everybody is a little bit quiet, you can adjust every single microphone the same way. Click on 14, go to mic parameters. And then instead of, don't click on this, if you look down here at the bottom where it says for all mics, make sure you check that and then you can get this and you can raise that all the way up and then hit return. And then if I go to another microphone, say microphone 10, and I open up the mic parameters, you can see that it is all the way up to 15 dB. So we don't actually want to do that. So we want to have them all the same. So we're going to check for all mics. We're going to bring this back down to zero and then we're going to hit return. So now if we go back to mic 14, which is the one that we were originally on and we open up mic parameters, you'll see that it's back in the center. So at this point, the Titan laptop is connected to uh, all of the delegate units and microphones, and you can control the gain on all of them individually, um, or you can control them all together. Uh, you can, of course, control all of them as well from the mixer, but the Titan input just goes into one input on the, uh, on the mixer. So if I bring the Titan fader up a little bit, It'll increase the volume on, it'll increase the gain on all of the microphones. Um, and if I bring the fader down some, it will lower the gain on all of the microphones. Uh, so if you just want to do them individually, you have to go into the Titan software uh, to do that. So now that we have the Titan software completely set up, 
Uh, the majority of the ARC meetings, they have a telephone um, call that has to be incorporated into it. And this is where we have to run an analog phone line into the ZAP. Um, it's XAP and the model number is TH2. Uh, so we call it the ZAP. Uh, and you have to tell the hotel in advance that you need an analog audio line and they will run one to you. And they have right here. And this is, it uh, looks just like your regular phone line, your regular phone cable uh, that you have at your house you know, if you have a landline, uh, and you'll plug this into the back of the gig rig where it says phone line in. And this right here, it says phone line in. So you just get your phone cable and you plug it directly in just like that. And you hear the snap. And then if you give it a little tug, you notice it won't come out. There's a little tab you have to press to pull it out. So, but we need that in. And then we already know that there's sound coming out of the speakers. Uh, the Titan speakers. So now we can go ahead and we can connect the phone call and we can just see if we get dial tone. Right now I'm kneeling down right in front of the gig rig. There's a wall right behind me so you can't really see what I'm looking at but there's only two buttons on the front of the on the front of the audio hybrid. Uh, on the left side it says clear one because that's the company that makes it. There's a transmit and receive um, light on it and then there's an on and an off. So if I press on uh, we should hear dial tone. And right now I hear dial tone. I'm not sure if you can hear the dial tone, but there is dial tone. So I'm going to go ahead and press off. You probably heard the beep beep. Uh, that's when you disconnect the phone line. Hanging out of the back of the gig rig, if you look at the, the telephone hybrid out of the back, there is a port called RS232. And basically what it is, is it, it looks like a VGA cable. It's not a VGA cable, um, I, uh, but it looks just like a VGA cable. And that's plugged into the back of the, uh, the telephone hybrid. And on the other side, there is a USB. This USB needs to be plugged into uh, the laptop. And there's actually a port reserved directly for it right here. And it actually says zap USB. So we want to make sure we always plug it in there. Now it's time to open up the software. I told you before, there's the clear one G-Wear link. You want to double click on that by double clicking the left mouse button. Uh, you get this little uh, error, just click OK. And then you get another one, you click OK. This is the interface um, that we use to uh, make the telephone calls. Along on the top, you have File, View, Units, Connect, Tools, and Help. Uh, we want to create a site, so we go File, new site. You have to create a site in order to make the telephone call. Um, you have to change the COM port. It automatically dial, uh, defaults to COM1, but you want to change it to COM4 because we have it assigned uh, to this USB port is COM4. So you then hit OK. And then along the top, file view units. You click on units and a drop down comes down and you can hit add unit. And then there's another drop down that comes down and you want to add the zap th2. So you click on that and you get another little window that comes up and you hit OK. So now you need to actually connect to it. So you hit connect and connect. And then you have a couple options. You can connect units or you can connect documents. You want to connect units. And then it says connection to site successful. And there's these little lights at the bottom that were not on. Then they turned yellow when it was trying to connect. And now they are green. So right now, we can now make a telephone call. So there's some options down at the bottom where it says dial. So you just click dial. And then you have your telephone interface. Um, you have the digits up here. And you, just, you can actually just type um, in, you know, 9, 1, you know, 703, blah, 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 um, whatever the telephone number is. Sometimes you have to dial 1, sometimes you have to dial 9, sometimes you just dial the area code, sometimes it's different if it's a 1-800 number. Uh, you just sort of have to ask the venue that you're at and they will say, oh, if it's a 1-800 number, you just dial 1 and then 800. If it's a local number, you, you have to dial 9 to get out. Um, so we're at the hotel and I've been here several times before, so I know that I have to dial 9-1 and then 
my telephone number. So I'll type it in, you hit dial, and it rings. In order to answer it, you have to talk into uh, one of the microphones. Um, and then if you do have a conference line that you're dialing into, you want to call into the conference line. Um, and it'll say, it'll ask you to enter in your, either your leader code or your participant code. Here, you'll want to enter your leader code. Um, and, and then it'll prompt you and it'll say you're the only one on the line. Uh, and then you want to, if somebody's with you or if somebody's not with you, uh, you actually want to then call in again uh, from your cell phone and dial in as a uh, participant because uh, the participants will have a different code. And then you can, usually like I said, when you come to these events, there's two people, uh, but just for this situation, it's only me that's here. Um, so, but so usually if you have another person, you just have them call in. And then when they talk on the phone, you can hear them through all of the Tiden speakers. Uh, and then when you want to talk back to them, you have to talk into one of the speakers. So you've connected the, all of the Titan microphones, you've daisy chained everything together, you have them connected to your Titan head unit, you have your telephone line connected, everything's all set. You're all done, right? Wrong. These boxes right here have our Mackie speakers in them. Uh, these speakers, the quality from these speakers is a hundred and, is a thousand times better than the quality that comes out of our Titan microphones. So you want to run out of the back of the um, gig rig out of the uh, the out right which is one of the plugs uh, on the back of the gig rig you run an XLR cable out of that and into one of your speakers we're gonna do that right now this right here is one of our uh, Mackie speakers this is the front and this is the back magic right if you look at the back of this you can see that there are a lot of little options on the back of this you, know, you can go all the way down to the bottom this is where you you plug the power in here and that is the on switch to turn it on. You have multiple inputs too. You can see we have input one, we have input two, and we have a through. We're going to be plugging into the input one. Uh, these speakers have a little mixer also. If you plug into two, um, then you can have sound from a microphone and then you can also use these RCA plugs, the right and left that you see, the red and white. <clears throat> and so there's a little mixer built into these speakers. These speakers are pretty neat, but we're not going to do that at this event. We're just going to use the input one, the one on the left. And so we're going to plug our XLR cable directly into input one. And we're going to plug the other end of our XLR cable directly into our mixer. And then the through, you can daisy chain the speakers also. You'll go out of the through and then you'll go into the input one of our other speaker. So then you have the, uh, you know, the sound. You don't have to run two cables from your mixer. You just run one and then you run another cable from that speaker to the other speaker. And each speaker, these are powered speakers. They have thousand watt amplifiers built into them and a crossover built into them. So you don't have to deal with any of that. It's all done on the inside. The only thing you have to deal with is the gain, which is the volume on these. You know, so you can see I've got it turned down pretty low. Um, and that's actually probably about where I'll have it. Uh, for this meeting uh, because this is a fairly small room that we're in. So doing audio for um, a room like this, I like to actually put the speakers uh, inside the hollow square on the ground because there's no audience, there's no participants, so there's no reason to set the speakers up and have them project out that way or that way or that way because everybody is sitting right here at the table. So I like to get one speaker. And I put it on the ground, just like this. And then I get the other speaker. And I put it on the ground, uh, just like this. And since everybody is so close, you really don't have to, ha have to have the volume turned up. I actually usually turn the volume um, down on the speakers, on the outputs of the Tiden. And then, so you can hardly hear yourself coming out of these speakers. So the majority of the sound is going to come out of our uh, out of our Mackie speakers, and it just sounds a lot better, especially when the person is on the telephone. So we're going to go out of one of the main outs from our mixer. We're going to run the cable along the ground, and we're going to go into input one on this speaker, and then we're going to go out of the through, and we're going to run another XLR cable over here. You're going to hide it behind the the skirt so it's pretty, and then you're going to plug it into this speaker into the input one. 
Um, and then, of course, each speaker has to be powered, so you plug them into the wall. Uh, before you turn them on, you want to make sure the volume is all the way down. Because if, if I had them at a very large conference before, the speaker is going to be turned up really loud. And if you turn it on, it's going to pop and it's going to be really loud. So it's just a good idea to turn the volume all the way down on the speakers before you turn it on. After you finish all of your sound checks, uh, it's really, really important to be, to be neat. Um, if you notice, you can see all of these cables, you know, from the Tiden uh, microphones that are all daisy chained together. It's really important to hide them behind the skirt. You know, that takes, you know, 10 minutes, you know, to hide all the wires, but it's really worth it in the end because when the client comes in and they see that we set the audio up, we don't want them to see wires every place. You know, we want them to see um, a very nice system. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm here at the, uh, the Washingtonian Hotel in Gaithersburg at the ARC meeting. Um, it probably took me about two hours to set everything up. Hopefully this video will only be 15 minutes. Uh, but it usually takes me about 45 minutes to set everything up. Um, and just to recap, we had our gig rig. Uh, we set our gig rig up. Um, we then ran all of our delegate microphones. Uh, we daisy chained them together. Uh, we turned on our Titan head unit. All of the screens lit blue. Uh, and then we went through and we did a check. Check one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's important to just test a couple of them. Check one, two, check one, two. And all of these microphones are all on the same, they're all on the same daisy chain. So come over here because we know that these are on a different daisy chain. Check one, two, one, two, three. Just make sure all these microphones work. Check, check, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. Everything uh, is appearing uh, to work just fine. Um, so at this point, like I said, you just need to clean everything up. Make sure all your cables are taped down, all the cables that can be hidden behind the skirts on the table. Make sure everything is pretty. Um, and I have all my gear and everything. It's spread all over the room. You really want to make sure everything is, uh, everything is tidy. Uh, and if you're in a small room like this, you might actually want to take some of the stuff up to your hotel room. Uh, if you're staying in the hotel, I'm staying in the hotel tonight. Usually the AV person stays in the hotel because, you know, sometimes you can't get into the room until 8 or 9 o'clock to set up. Today I was pretty lucky. I was able to get into the room at about 4 o'clock. Um, so right now it's about dinner time. So I'm just going to tidy everything up. I'm going to tape down all my wires. I'm going to do one last sound check. Uh, and then I'm going to go have some dinner. So uh, if you guys have any questions at all, uh, about anything that was in this video, please uh, come see me. You know, I'm over in the leadership pod on the MEP side. Uh, my name is Frank Guest. Um, I plan on being with NCC for a very, very long time. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please call me. You know, please walk over, open door policy. Uh, if you happen to be on site and you have any issues with anything, you know, call me. Uh, you can call my cell phone, you can call my direct line, um, and, uh, and I'll be happy to walk you through uh, any situation uh, that you uh, happen to come across. So thanks. I hope you enjoyed this and as much as I did. Have a good one.